Hey guys, it's Street, and welcome back to another flea market movie shopping vlog. And today I got seven tapes and seven DVDs. It all evens out. And this time I actually had a, a better time sort of moving around when I got to the flea market. Because I don't know if I've mentioned it in my other videos, but uh, due to the indisputable fact that, uh, forgive my bluntness, I am a giant fat ass, it is sort of difficult, mobility is difficult for me, it's not like unbearable, like you know I don't need some mobility scooter or something like that, but when I walk around for long stretches of time, it, it, it puts heavy, heavy, heavy fucking pressure on my back, because I've got, I've got fucking tank hips, like I've got huge fucking hips, and you know combined with all that weight, it just fucking makes my, it kills my back and it hurts my heart. Like, I literally have trouble breathing. That's how fucking bad it is. But luckily, this time, it was still painful, but less strenuous, mainly due to the fact that um, it wasn't really that hot out today. It was kind of muggy, but it rained, so it was a little cooler, and I had a better time moving around. Well, now to get to the meat of the video. I'm going to be showing you my DVDs first. I got Bone Tomahawk with Kurt Russell. And I have, I've seen a few Kurt Russell films, obviously. Loved him in The Thing. That's a classic. And I've heard some whispers about Bone Tomahawk. Some people say it's like overindulgent or gory or like it's a shit movie or it's disturbing. I don't know anything about this film. I don't even know the plot, but it looks fucking cool. I usually don't really like modern westerns too much, but I'm willing to give this one a fair go. Let's see the Oh, hell yeah! It's got a design on there. I love it when they get designs on DVDs. I hate it when they pick the lazy route and they just put the logo on a blank disc. Those discs, those discs are so much harder to get scratched too, so I like those discs a lot better. And next, I got Rage at Dawn with Randolph Scott. I've seen three Randolph Scott films so far. Uh, Ride Lonesome, uh, Ride the High Country, which I'm mean, kind of disappointing, though he was good in it. I think that was his last film. It's kind of a sad film to go off of, but he did, his, he did his best, and I honestly admire that. Even if you're in like a horrible movie, or it wasn't even really that horrible, it was just really bland and boring, but we're not talking about that, but I'm just saying, even if you put your effort into something that's really not worth it, that just shows that you've got a great character, you know, and I've never seen Rage at Dawn, but it, it looks, it admittedly looks cool. I like the, um, I think this is a 90s release, or like an early 2000s release, let me check here, I don't know, but look, it's, it's, it looks so, like, the, the design of the DVD, it looks so late 90s to early 2000s, like the classic DVD style, you know what I mean? And check out that um, under text, it says, uh, The boldest double cross in the history of outlaws. Hell yeah. Let's check out the disc. And, uh, I, I mean, fairly, it's kind of a boring design, but at least it's got some, uh, got some color there and it's not blank on the outside. It's still a boring design but hopefully a very good movie. And next, I got Shane with Van Heflin, and I've seen two Van Heflin films so far. Uh, my favorite film of his that he was in was uh, Possessed, which is a film that really struck a chord with me. If you haven't seen Possessed, I'm talking about the 1947 version with Crawford, uh, I definitely recommended it. I covered it in my... Um, Street Reviews 30 Films, which was a recent upload of mine, and that's a film that really struck a chord with me, and he was, he was played the most despicable piece of shit in that, but he did so well. He also plays kind of a piece of shit in The Prowler, which is a Joseph Losey film. Sorry, I'm not trying to ramble, but um, I haven't seen Shane yet. It looks fairly interesting. It came out, what, 1952. But there's Van Heflin right there. Who else is in here? Gene, Ar uh, Gene Arthur, Alan Ladd, uh, Jack Palance. Oh, Jack Palance is in here. Nice. I like 
Jack Helms. And we got a Robin Williams classic one hour photo. And guess what? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I know. I've heard this is one of his more underrated films. And, uh, I mean, is that, is it two discs? No. Um, oh, and you can tell this is a, oh, this was a blockbuster. This was a blockbuster DVD. Look at that. Holy shit. I knew there was something about the, the, the way it was, uh, the way it was encased. Like this specifically, I was thinking, wait a minute. Is this one of those leftover, uh, video store DVDs? And I got myself a Blockbuster DVD right here. That's awesome. That's honestly awesome. I used to go to Blockbuster when I was a kid. It's unfortunate that they closed down. I was like really, really young, like a toddler or so. Man, that that is the first Blockbuster case DVD I own. That is awesome. And I didn't even know it until now. And next, I actually got a documentary series called Gangster Empire Rise of the Mob and I, I, I first thought this was sort of like a some sort of crime drama or something like a, like a mini series but then I looked on the back and you see you've got some pictures of mobsters you know I mean I, I think uh, Luciano's here uh, good old Scarface yeah that's Luciano right there and uh, some other guy and it's still wrapped in its package right there I, the, the mob has been something that's interested me for a long time. Ever since I saw The Godfather, I've had such a... I've been drawn to the culture of mobsters. And, you know, like, uh, you know, you know so, so stuff like that. You know what I mean? And next, I got Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Now, I did spot a copy of Hellboy 1, the original... But I didn't pick it up because I, I watched it like once when I was a kid and I remember nothing from it. But however, I used to watch the sequel all the time. All the fucking time. Unfortunately, the disc got like horribly damaged beyond repair. But now I rebought it and it's still in its package. Look at that. This, this is such an awesome movie. Guillermo del Toro, I think this is one of the only films I've seen, or if if not the only film I've seen of his, and its visual style is so incredible, the characters are incredible, there's multiple scenes from the film that still fuck with me to this day, like those tooth fairies and that thing that the guy, that the elf dude shoots on the dude's face with the eyeball and, you know that, Ooh. Oh, and there's there's more. That it's just such a fucking awesome movie. And I also got the fuck is that? There's some tape on here. Get rid of that tape. There you go. Anyways, um, there's this movie called These Thousand Hills, and it's got good old John Wayne in it. I, oh, wait, that's not John Wayne. Um, there's Richard Egan though. Stuart Whitman, I've heard that name, and Lee, Lee Remick. I thought this was a John Wayne film, that's why I picked it up. But, um, it looks fairly interesting. This guy right here, he looks like, this, this guy, he looks like James Coburn a little, doesn't he? Looks like James Coburn. Late 70s James Coburn. Uh, oh, this was 1958, that's probably not Coburn. Oh, man. Boring design. Damn, I hate when they do that. And that is the last of the DVDs. Now we go to the VHS tapes. Now, I used to have this on DVD, but like a lot of my childhood DVDs, it got scratched. So, I got Jurassic Park on VHS. And the funniest thing is, Jordan has a copy of this on VHS too. So when we move together, which we plan on doing, hey, hey, Keep on the lookout for some collaboration reviews, huh? If you're if you're up for it, Jordy. So now we're gonna have two VHS copies of this. He doesn't even have a VHS player, but I do, and we're gonna share. We might even like put these two right next to each other. <laughs> and next I got the Shadow Riders. It's got Tom Selleck, and with a name like the Shadow Riders, it looks like it'd be pretty it looks like it could be pretty promising. 
This came out in 2005. Whoa, I thought this was uh, at least 99 or so. And next, I got The Horse Soldiers with John Wayne. Holy shit. Is that, um... That's William Holden! I didn't notice that. I love William Holden. And next, I got a late Glenn Ford film, Santee. I looked this up on... I actually discovered this through IMDb uh, a few... Like a year ago or so. And I had it on my list. And I was like, hey, that's the film I had on my list. So I added it. And next, the... Uh, we're getting down to the last three VHS tapes. I got Dinosaur. Now, some people really hate this, and some people like it. Personally, I'm in the middle. The film's got attributes, but it's not perfect. It's one of those guilty pleasures of mine. I can probably say, if I, if I was to watch this now as an adult, I probably would not... Yeah, I probably wouldn't enjoy it that much. But, since I grew up with this film, I still have a lot of love for it. And it's one of those weird uh, puffy cases, too. I seem to notice a lot of uh, 90s VHS tapes, they got these weird puffy casings, especially Disney ones. And, the last two films I got on VHS were Star Trek III, Search for Spock, and Star Trek IV. The Voyage Home. Check that out. Now, I already have these on DVD in like a 10 film set, but I'm not going to pass off getting these motherfuckers on VHS. That is going to look awesome for my shelf. I'd honestly rather watch films on VHS than DVD, which may be a weird take, but I like the vintage quality. Uh, VHS tapes are a lot more durable, and basically, that's my reason. And I ended up spending about... I had like $26, so I had $3 left, and with my last $3, I got myself a Rain, Rain Sherbert, I can't remember if I tried this or not, and I got a chocolate bar, and for dinner, I had me some Rock and Roll McDonald's, I got uh, seven chicken burgers, and uh, I think I saved one. Oh, I did save them. Fucking gobble those motherfuckers up. Anyways, I'm very happy with my purchases. I got lots of great VHS tapes. I got lots of great movies. And um, while I was in the store and I was buying my drink in my bar, uh, the cashier lady, she actually noticed my shirt. And she's like, hey, that's an awesome shirt. And I was like, I know, right? Undeniably a classic. And she's like, oh, definitely. It's great to see people take interest in the classics. And she was like, and the coolest thing was, she was like around my age. She could have been like, what, two, three years older than me. So that's like honestly fucking cool to meet people that enjoy the same shit as you, you know? That's so cool. It wasn't even inspected. It wasn't even expected. And by some chance, if you happen, happen to watch this, uh, Miss, uh, black-haired lady at the count at the at the cashier at, uh, at the cashier place I want to thank you for complimenting my shirt <laughs> honestly I've had such a I've had a pretty good day honestly I don't think I can complain though there is one little thing I need to mention and I don't mean to bring the mood down but today being August 6 2023 it sadly marks the death of of one of the most inspirational film critics of all time. His name was Emmer Prevost. This man has inspired me for years. And unfortunately, I only discovered his channel after he passed away in 2017, about five or six years ago. I am speechless. I don't know what I could say to best describe Emmer besides the fact that the guy was one of the most honest critics on the face of the platform. He, he sort of instilled the, the, the principles of film criticism that I still hold today, that you stay true to yourself, you be honest with your criticisms. Even if it's a film you like, you have to, you have to 
uh, you gotta compliment the good and reprimand the bad. And I just, I love how unfiltered he was. You know, his editing wasn't the greatest. He didn't have fancy editing. He didn't have fancy equipment. He just, he sort of just did what I'm doing here. You know, just sitting in a chair with a weird old background, you know. He wasn't fancy, he wasn't flashy. But the greatest thing about Emmer was he was himself. And it's a damn shame that he's gone. I will never forget Emmer. And I want to dedicate this video to Emmer Preboss. Now, he doesn't need any shout out from me, but if you have happened to not, uh, if you have uh, never heard of Emmer, I definitely recommend that you check him out and you watch his videos. Because he's the type of critic in person that deserves to be remembered. Well, guys, that was the vlog. Rest in peace, Emmer. And I'll see you guys next time.